the dark night of the soul. I'm the Frank Fryer. Let's get frank about it. <laughs> Hey Carmels, I invite you, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help me, and give the video a little like if you enjoy it. And also, I invite you now to leave a comment down below. Let me know how this video or my previous videos on, you know, the Dark Knight of St. John of the Cross has been helping you in your life. And maybe, just maybe, if we bring all of our thoughts together, we can get a wonderful conversation going and really discuss this important aspect of the spiritual life. Thank you very much, my brothers and sisters. I always appreciate your time. So this is, I don't want to put this, the last video in a five-part series on the Dark Knight. And uh, last week was on the Dark Knight of the Senses, where we talk about how God is, is sort of pulling away his consolations, and there's some ramifications that affects with that in relationship to our spiritual life, because it really helps us, even though it's a struggle within us, to grow in the spiritual life. Because as John of the Cross puts forward, the spiritual life is about a movement from being a beginner, sort of a child, to becoming an adolescent, a, a proficient in the spiritual life, to finally being in union with God, which of course happens fully in the beatific vision. But we have a taste of that union here on earth, sort of being an adult in the spiritual life. And this last night one must go through is the dark night of the soul. And this is probably the one that's most vague. Why? Because it's most personal. What do I mean by that? The dark night of the soul, sometimes called the dark night of the spirit, is where, of course, God has pulled away all of his consolations. He's becoming incredibly close to us, but we're going to be taken into a deep period of desolation. And that's why sometimes people get uh, issues of depression mixed up with the dark night. And that's why one of the reasons I want to make this video is to say, you know, if you're going through deep sorrow and all sort of the clinical aspects of depression, you know, make sure you go seek professional medical help. Because the dark night of the soul is not sort of a, a depression, you know, in terms of a psychological sense. And I already mentioned that the dark night of the soul is something very personal. And what's going on? It's a, as John of the Cross, and I'll read some words from it. It's a, it's a par excellence. It's a, it's a passive night of the spirit because of the darkness that it causes within us. But it's, it's this affliction that comes from within inside of us because of the divine light that comes ever closer to us. And this passive aspect of it is very important because that reminds us that God is doing something for us. He is still trying to rip up from deep down inside of us these little roots of of attachments and of of things that sort of you know our appetite gets excited by and etc. So, and John of the Cross mentions not many people want to go through the dark night of the soul. It's not not everyone gets drawn into it and through it. It is an invitation and a gift given by God. And I keep going back to it's so personal that's why it's so hard to talk about this because through the dark night of the soul human person that's being drawn into it is becoming more conformed to the love of god which means the cross they have to go and embrace the cross and you know we all have different sort of crosses and that's why it's so for lack of a better word, personalistic, because the cross that the Lord is inviting me, maybe through a dark night of the soul experience, is going to be different than someone else's. But there is this, you know, to become more united, to live in full union with God through love, means we must go through the cross, which is not an easy thing. But being a disciple is not meant to be an easy thing. We're called to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. And in that that picking up the cross in this movement within the Carmelite life where we're called to live in allegiance to God with a pure heart and a stout consciousness. Purity of heart occurs through the, through the writings and the idea and the theology of John the Cross through these dark night experiences where the heart is purified. So we, that person, we can go into the cross we have been given by you know maybe the world thrusting it upon us the devil um our our own flesh and etc but it's a cross that christ's love transforms and even though you know this dark night of the soul is a period of desolation you know the faith hope and love are still present even though they may seem stretched thin because 
the dark night isn't about abandonment. We're not being abandoned by God. This is something very clear in John of the Cross. We are, in fact, at one of our closest moments with him. It's just his divine light blinds us so much it appears as if it's a night. You know, it's like a human sight. If someone sort of stares at the sun, their eyes will physically go blind. So when the Son of God and His divine light come so close to us, our eyes become blind, and it's this darkest night. And that's why the dark night of the soul is it's, it's like that darkness that hits the human person right before the sunrise, right before the sunrise, where, you know, the night is at its darkest and it's hardest to see, and, and we're not fully aware of what's going on around us, but we know something is, in fact, occurring. But there is this hopeful anticipation that we know the sun will rise again. And in this dark night experience, when the Lord is so close to us, so very close to us, we sense, and this is where we have these, these struggles, as John mentions, as I read to you, this, this sort of affliction of our, our human misery comes out within us because we have things that will be coming up to be taken away from us. And we sense these things even though we're in this midst of darkness. But there's still the hopeful dawn that awaits us. The dark night of the soul is in an end within and of itself. It's a process within a journey, as John of the Cross started his whole text with, a union with God through love. So as I end this five-part video series on St. John of the Cross's work, Dark Knight. It is somewhat vague, but that's because it's so individual. I hate to use the word individualistic, but it's just so personal because of the crosses that we all have in, in order to finally grow in this profound union with Christ that we're all called into through love means we have to go the way of the cross because it's not and not and not as John of the Cross talks about nothing but Christ, nothing but Christ, nothing but Christ. And it's in this union that we become overflowing with God's love and then it pours forth on all others around us. And remember, you know, this feeling and this impact of desolation during the dark night of the soul, the dark night of the spirit sort of period, you know, it can last for a long time. It can be a short time. You know, people might have gone through it regularly. You know, there's a, there's no definitive A to B and here's the path, but, but become aware and, and be aware of what depression is like. And if you feel and believe you're going through a dark night experience, look up you know, what depression is, is about and make sure if you need help within that, you know, because some people may go through the dark night experience through the invitation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and they're still struggling with the, the reality of depression and they're not the same thing. So just because you're maybe in a state of sadness and your prayer is a little dry doesn't necessarily mean you're going through the dark night of the soul. This is something that John of the Cross mentioned several times throughout his text that, you know, there will only be few that go through this. You know, the Lord meets us where we're at in order to take us to where he wants us to be. And he's not going to give us more than we can handle. We may not believe we can handle a certain amount, but he knows what we can handle. And he's going to provide it to us as a necessity to aid us in this union with God through love. So this dark night and this passive aspect, I really want to work up here. It's God at work within us. And he's so close to us during the dark night in order to purify our hearts so we can go and embrace the cross that is being offered to us so we can follow him fully. So our heart in its pureness, which he himself has made possible, beats along with his sacred heart, with his sacred heart. So my brothers and sisters, if you believe and feel you're going through this dark night experience, you know, put a message down below. Maybe we can talk about it. If you want more information, I, I'm trying to make a, a book reading list of some things to give out to people. But remember, this is the work of God, not about our own abilities. We don't put ourselves into these things. We don't save ourselves. 
We can't make ourselves grow in union with God. We do work during that. We help to prepare the field as necessary. But at the end of the day, God's ways are God's ways, and he brings us through the ways in which he has offered to us through the salvation gained for us through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. So my brothers and sisters, thank you for your time during this five-part series. If there's other things you wish to know about Carmelite spirituality, history, etc., leave a comment down below. I really like getting fresh and new ideas that have helped me to shape the content and the direction of this channel. Know that I'm with you. Know that I'm praying for you. May God continue to bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks again, Carmelos, for your time. And if you like today's video, please give it a like. And also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. And if I can ask you a little favor, please make sure you're sharing this video if you really like it or some of my other videos. Put it out there on your different social media platforms. It really does help me. As Carmelos, we need to support each other as a family. And I invite you for the last time to leave a comment down below, share your ideas with me, ask me questions, help me to develop the necessary direction for this channel. I have a good idea where I want to go, but I want to make sure it's always serving the audience that supports me through this work. You're the reason why I do what I do here on YouTube. And thanks be to God, my superiors have valued this work and support me in this work. And I thank them very much for that. Thank you very much for your time, my brothers and sisters. As usual, know that I'm praying for you.